and bring that up. Hello, drink tea. Um, comment on the website. Now, I was kind of planning to keep the, say, comments on the website a bit more secret than comments on YouTube, but I don't think this comment was put there to be kept secret. It's not. It's not. So I'm going to read it because as a long comment goes, it's bloody marvellous. And long comments are rarely bloody marvellous because the person writing it, as is the way nowadays, just loses their way and it either turns into a rant, which I suppose this is to an extent, but um, it's together. People rarely can keep their shit together when they write more than two sentences. And that can come under the same heading of what happened, question mark, that people can't keep their shit together for very long. When I was a child and teenager in the 50s and 60s, so we're getting it. Now it's going to come from the UK, I know that because the NHS is involved, National Health Service, but um, I've read this through once, so I can say that mostly it's going to be pertinent to most places in the Western world. The public owned its own services, so this is the UK, um, as in gas, electric, telephone, British Telecom, um, the GPO, the General Post Office, was called the Royal Mail, um, etc, etc. Okay. Trains, buses, electric, gas, water and mail, oh there we go, and the trains and the buses. Um, many of the buses uh, were run by local councils, trains were just about all government owned. Okay. I used to, when I used to go to school, when I was 12, I used to get, to get up early in the morning, I'd go on one bus and then I'd get the train and then I'd get another bus. So that's at this sort of time as well. So I'm quite well conversed in, um, publicly owned public transport but as we're going to get to I think what was then cannot be directly compared properly with now or we can't make the comparison or I'm going to say why the comparison is now not can't be valid or what has changed basically and profit helped pay for community services. Well, I'll gloss over that one. Prescriptions and university education were free. Prescriptions for, you know, going medical things were free, yes. University education was free, yes. Um, I could stop and talk about all of these. Um, university education, not many people went, and the people that went were generally from richer backgrounds, so everybody paid for free education for the richer people. But yes, it was free. So I'm not I'm not arguing against anything here. It's as it's I think I'll shout out if things don't come this way, but basically it's a statement of fact. Legal and union representation gave job security. I don't think that's actually true, but I'm not so against it that I'm going to stop and have a go at it. And it's in my answer, I think, is why, although it's not, it's not a lie and it's not untrue, I don't think it's as true as it looks on the page. Legal and union representation gave job security. I don't think it actually worked like that. But that's what this video might be about.
Council housing and rent control meant everyone was housed. Let's say that was just about true. Crumbs, although I could say something about everything, can't I? So, better hadn't. Equality was becoming a reality. To a greater extent, it was. Um, because working man was getting, let's say, more and more wages. And uh, that's blue collar. White collar were getting more wages, but not particularly more wages. So blue collar were catching up. Yes. With free education, social mobility truly happened. Um, I think there was social mobility, um, but it, I, and the, it had tentacles into free education, but I don't think it was a direct um, result of free education. There was, though, more social mobility than there is now. We had two Prime Ministers from grammar school education, um, Major and I don't know who the other one would be, um, but I'm about, about bound to be true. Anyone from anywhere could become anything. Again, that's just about true as well. At last, society was moving forward and there was hope. If I get to it in this video, I'll say yes, but where society was moving forward to was here and now. So there was hope, but the hope was misplaced. Computers and machinery were designed to ease the burden. We were told soon we would be working a 20-hour week. Computers have never really um, eased burdens, have they? Filing clerks, was it really a burden? Um, machinery, etc. Yes, there was more machinery doing hard work. Um, but with, 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 okay, from the Second World War, there was more hydraulic um, machinery, um, JCB diggers and things like that. But there had been chainsaws for a long time. But yes, and we would be working a 20-hour week, but anyone that really believed that was um, not looking very far. And earning more money with more leisure. Yes, there was more money being earned and less hours worked and there was more leisure and more things to do, more leisure opportunities. Um, let's just say going on a continental holiday, um, probably Spain, was becoming very popular. May, maybe moving into the 70s as opposed to the 50s and 60s, but yes. Science was going to improve the quality of life. Um, I think it has. Our bank manager was our trusted friend. Yes. He had our interests at heart. Yes. Because our interests were his, and it was invariably he, his interests. Companies valued loyalty. That's a absolutely monstrous one, but I'm just going to say it was a mo it's a monstrous one. It's so very valid, and I'd love to speak on it forever, but it's just true and very important, and it's gone. Companies valued loyalty. It's gone. <coughs> the longer you were a customer, the better deals you received. That's just part of it, quite, quite right, and the longer you worked, yeah, etc., etc., uh, companies valued loyalty. Policemen walked the beat and were our friends again. Um, 50s and 60s started going into pandas in the 70s, didn't they? Yeah. Uh, they represented and defended the community. Community being the big important word there. Absolutely true. Teachers educated our children. 
again to the best of their ability i believe they did um and could generally keep control and doctors would see us any time and care at any time a bit young at the time but generally yes you could get an appointment and you would get very good care from the doctor and it would be the same doctor who'd known you since you were a baby probably now our politicians are all privately educated not quite true but I get where you're coming from our country and services have been sold uh, let's not say country because that's just the first thing that's just a bit meh the services have been sold yes are sick disabled and disenfranchised are persecuted persecuted is too strong um but yes the sick disabled and disenfranchised in what's been called the tory austerity years have been kicked in the fanny all care and compassion has dissolved no that's not true um it has been squeezed like buggery but you've got to squeeze care and compassion out of individual people and that hasn't quite been completed yet so it hasn't totally dissolved our minds and fears are constantly distracted yes that is true and to a much greater extent than they were in the 50s 60s or 70s we look at boom boobs and bums and blame the immigrants i would think looking at boobs and bums just where available would have been done equally as much in the 50s and 60s and when it comes to immigrants that was not actually the best time for trying to be an immigrant in the united kingdom the rich have got richer and the poor poorer all the statistics say yes I, again i could do a video series on it so i won't go into it i'll just say yes the one percent have it all no they do not obviously they don't um obviously they don't we eat shit take shit and believe shit we eat shit um yes i think so take shit take shit drugs may be um drugs are much better than they were in the 50s and 60s are they you could get heroin cocaine in the 50s and 60s Plen not plenty of dope but good dope from north africa but there's couldn't get good rave stuff mdma and stuff um believe shit there are more people more things to believe in there's so comparatively there's more shit being believed now than there was in the 50s and 60s yes the when we come to my pyramid of things in people's brains religion still would have been would have been a lot lot higher then in the 50s and 60s so is that shit um but the family would have been um higher and more honestly placed people will say now that the their family is higher up their priority pyramid but from what i see i don't believe them not that i particularly say it should be at the top but um people will say it they their family is at the top now but i don't think it was when it probably more was in the 50s and 60s pay through the nose for what was ours um probably meaning um the old nationalized services um no 
I would say that if the services were still nationalised, they you would be paying an awful lot more now than you would if they hadn't. If they you would be paying more if they were nationalised now than you do now because they are not nationalised. Yes, you have to pay the extra for private shareholders profits but the efficiencies that these bastards make and do pass on to you will make would have made it cheaper have made it cheaper by going sold over to private as opposed to nationalized but the consequence obviously is that all wages in that industry have been driven down and a lot passed on to shareholders, but a lot also passed on to the customer. It's just a fact. Just, uh... But it's part more, more important than it's been privatised and efficientized, and wages have been driven down. That's all the thing. Where the only other places that wages haven't been driven down and... Um, pensions quality not driven down is in the civil service and i'd say if you're wanting to have a rant and rave about something it is the driving down of wages everywhere or you can take the opposite approach that uh, the civil service is holding out as an unreasonable bastion of giving out decent then wages have never been good in the civil servants service but pensions have been good and the pensions the divine pensions of the civil servants now are um, not in line with everybody else in the private sector uh, the poor blame the poorer unfortunately they do and always will while the rich laugh up their sleeve yes um, the rich aren't doing too badly for the moment the police, National Health Service and Education just fill in forms. There's an awful lot of form filling in. Um, I have no idea because I don't have the expertise. But you can imagine the complexity of a, a 2018 society as opposed to a 1958 society. And... The demands that the hoo ha and hubbub that you would get if the forms weren't filled in when something goes wrong, and something always goes wrong. I'm like this on this form filling in. I hate it. I look at it in places like you say, the NHS, where nurses are filling in forms and think. Surely this is a waste of time. But then there's another part of the brain that says, look, you've got to be reasonable. An awful lot of this form filling in is absolutely essential. Because if the shit hits the fan, people will want to know what went wrong and the forms are the only way of really finding out what went really went wrong. It's a very tricky one. I, I wouldn't like to shout it on either side too loudly they massage the figures yes of course but everybody always massages figures that's what figures are for to keep us in the dark yes that's why they do it we have no representation i don't think you really did in 19 in the 50s and 60s either but it wasn't needed because the people representing you represented you so you didn't have to need to be represented if you get what i mean I'm agreeing with you. Not at any level anywhere. Uh, representation. We have no representation at any level anywhere. As the poor get squeezed just yet again. Um, yes. But what do you expect for the poor? It's a very tricky one. Again, it, what do you expect for the poor? I don't want them to be squeezed either, either, because I'm a nice person as well. But realistically, what do we expect for the poor? 
you can say more. Um, this I do the Guardian comment thing all the time. Um, a, 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 a living wage just given to them. It's so tricky. Or they should have um, a working wage which is higher. You know, national minimum wage which is higher. That's bloody tricky as well because if you introduce that they'll get either more immigrants in, more uh, machinery in, or just lose the jobs completely to a country that hasn't raised the minimum wage. The place just closes. There will always be rich, there will always be poor, because it will always be a scale. In Sweden, um, all the Scandinavian countries where, let's say, the gap's the smallest, you still got rich and poor. Some fucker has always got to be poor, just like some fucker's always got to be rich. It's to just, just, just put it down in your mind as a statistical, inevitable fact, and it slightly makes it easier. As the poor get squeezed yet again, violence will arise. <sighs> Not much it won't. I don't think so. Not not until something really big happens and something big isn't going to happen. Violence won't arise because the poor, as they've always done, will get used to being poor. Or poorer. We sold weapons to all sides of global, global funk conflict naturally we caused most of the wars Ugh. not statistically a fact but all right i know what you mean um but it's very again it's one of these you've got to be realistic things you you're leaders of the western world and shit happens in the world and should you go and do something about it or should you sit on your hands and do nothing it's a very difficult one you've got to be realistic like they have to be or forced into being realistic when they're in charge it's very difficult we cause the wars we complain about the refugees and one day this will backfire until we find compassion, until we really care. We care an awful lot because, again, we're all individuals and individuals do care an awful lot. The caring will go on. Until we lift the blindfolds, we will repeat history. Of course we will. Because history has arisen because of the inevitability of some actions caused by some causes. Those some causes will repeat themselves, and the some actions in reply to those causes will repeat themselves, because the reasons for doing them rarely change, and can't be changed, won't change. History will repeat itself read history it repeats itself all the time because history is about people and we're still people millions are slaughtered in conflict was it ever thus millions are of refugees and starving was it ever thus billions of animals are slaughtered was it ever thus and we're looking at tits and bums because we're individuals Individuals do what individuals do. Individuals look at tits and bums. Or whatever the female equivalent of that is, which is slightly more cerebral, but it's just the cerebral equivalent of looking at tits and bums. When will humanity wake up? It will wake up when it stops becoming humanity. 
quite frankly, humans are humans, individuals. Doing individual things, are liable to do individual things, and will continue to do individual things, which amount to what you see when you open a history book. And there's no reason to believe that we are any more or less humanity than all the humanity in the history books. So we will continue to write history books. Now, I haven't done one single answer. I've read the question in 26 minutes because I've actually got an answer which links into uh, 1, 2 and 3. So I'll see you for that. And a new cup of tea.